this is a discussion podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. It's elementary, my dear Sanzo. Oh, what is? School. It's elementary <laughs> school. Oh, no, I hate school. Well, deal with it. <laughs> oh, no. Also joining us today is Torterra. I am so prepped up for this race. Finally, a tortoise like me can participate in something. I, I think you're over the weight limit. What? Yeah, man. Speciesist. Like, I need a lawyer. I don't know. You need a detective because in this episode, we are going to review Friendship is Magic issue 83. Uh, in this issue, Twilight Sparkle and Spike investigate when a famous racing tortoise goes missing. Oh no! So, before we officially start, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, it's fun to see a Twilight uh, centric story where it's just her and Spike. They don't do that very often. But at the same time, this one really feels like filler. It's like it's a silly adventure. Uh, it's a love letter to all the various uh, Sherlock Holmes stories. And then it's over and done and kind of forgotten. I feel that way. It's true. But at the same time, too, it's kind of cute. It's <laughs> it's it's a very interesting mystery story. Makes you perk up and kind of want to keep an eye out on stuff. So anyway, um, Tara, what do you think of this comic? Mm, this comic is... I don't want to hate it. I do like the... The, um, the story of where it's going with the setting and how it's set up. But as soon as you get to a certain part, you know what's going to happen. And as for me, this one is just fun. I, I totally forgot about this one. But reading through the comics, trying to do the funny voices, uh, yeah, I can do it. But anywho, if you have not read this comic yet, pause sure and go do so. Welcome back. So yeah. We start off the comic in the Exposition Express. Uh, our heroes, Spike and Twilight, are heading to see the Great Northern Tortoise Race in Scott Ponyland. So the scenario here is that Rainbow Dash entered Spike in a tortoise race, but she couldn't take him there because he... No, not Spike. Uh... Tank. Tank. Yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, that'll be strange. <laughs> well, I mean, Twilight could enter Spike in the race. I mean, he is basically reptilian. But there's a weight limit, according to Norman. Well, he just needs to cut down on the gems a little and jazzercise more. But anywho, Rainbow Dash signed in Tank into a race, but she couldn't bring him there because she has Rainbow... No, she has Wonderbolt duties very unfortunate for her. So Twilight has to take her place. So once there, they head to ta the town center and it's a ghost town. Oh no, where is everyone? Because it seems so moody and glum like a ghost town. Uh, Twilight asks what's the reason for the town being so sad and a police Officer says that it's because of Silver Blaze. And Silver Blaze is the prize winning racing turtle. And with her dis with with her disappearance, the town feels so sad and depressed. And before I move on, Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean basically we just had a premise set up. I fear I'm at a disadvantage in this because I haven't been as avid a Sherlock Holmes fan. And I think uh, I think that uh, you will get a lot more references if you're a longtime fan. But by and large, it's just set up. Honestly, the, the big thing that sticks out to me is the artwork. Because the artist in for this issue, let's see, her name is Kate Sharon. For starters, it looks like she traced a screenshot of Spike uh -huh. in the very first panel. Uh, his excited face. And Spike does not have wings in this comic, which either sets it in the time frame or may have been forgotten. But there's also really interesting like low-angle shots of when uh, 
Okay, I do get the Lay Strahd of Trotland Yard huh. reference. So there's the where she's talking with Lay Strahd, and it's this low angle shot where they're both kind of towering upwards. But you realize that uh, Kate Sharon likes to draw circular shapes. Every environment is in some way an oval. The balconies curve at a very extreme angle. The uh, handrails, or I guess hoof rails, get really close to the viewer, but they also curve far away. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean now. Because uh, but just looking at the door, the door is uh, rounded at the top. Um, certain background scenes like fences, not really fences, like uh, stone walls. They're a lot round. And yeah, that, that seems to be her motive. That's the biggest thematic I can spot. And Tara, what about you? Mm, I mean, you can't really say much because, like so we said, we're basically still at the beginning of the story. Like, bas- basically the setup, you know, how they enter a town, it's like, something's not right here. And then, you know, mystery, something's missing. And Twilight's like, all right, time to investigate this crime. And uh, I do, there was one part, though, where... um. Pretty much right at the beginning of the comic, where Twilight is just talking and talking. You got all these long paragraphs, and I'm like, oh, I got so much reading. I'm starting to be like, Spike, I might pass out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's going for the effect there. But yeah, I, I do notice what you say, Silver, about uh, the art being similar to tracing. Yep, that's really all I got at the moment. So what do you think, man? Like, I, I feel like this is just done for her practice, like just get the feel for Spike because as we go on I don't see her do that so much or probably I'm not looking at it properly because the more I look at Spike in the earlier issues or the earlier panels seems like she is almost tracing every part almost well I Again, it's one of those situations where I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they were facing any sort of limitation or it was a time saver. It's all a, a bit of a mystery. In a mystery comic, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, But yeah, it's not that much. Uh, you know what? And I, 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 I don't know what to say. But anywho, um, <laughs> let's carry on. So, <clears throat> Twilight meets up with... <laughs> uh, Lee Strud, Strud, Strud. How how do you say yep. that? Strud from Lay Le, Stride, the Stride of Tartland Yard. Aha! I see what you did there. So, she's the investigator for the case, and she meets up with Princess Twilight, and it seems that she knows who she is. Awesome! Yay! No more awkward introductions about who the Princess of Friendship is. We, we, everybody knows each other great. Now, Twilight offers her assistant in the investigation, and she accepts. So, <clears throat> we go into a backstory about uh, Silver Blaze going missing, and they're trying to find who the culprit is and where is Silver Blaze. So they head around, um, going back to the scene of the crime, and they meet up with Elder Brown. Is that her name? Elder Brown. Well, let's see here. Uh, Alder Brown. Elder Brown. All right. Elder Brown. So <clears throat> Stride here just uh, introduced. Uh, her to Princess Twilight and saying that uh, she is one of the ponies that really wants to enter the race and whatnot. And yeah, seems like she is adamant that the race must go on. And while this is going on, Twilight is cool. So yeah, we head off to Downey Berm's farm and Downey here is deaf or hard to hear. So with that, uh, Twilight knocks on the door and we're introduced to Downey. Downey likes stargazing and eating carrots with something, I, I don't know. And it seems that it's his fault that the turtle escaped because he didn't lock the door. Something like that. And yeah, this is just basically Twilight trying to find uh, clues and whatnot. And Downey here is kind of a cool guy and gives Twilight 
a nice hat and cloak. Yay. Much awesomeness. Keeping the story on brand. I know. <clears throat> so, anywho, after that, they head to one of the homes and it belongs to. Um, I'm not getting names here. Do, are, we, are we getting names? We're getting names with their. Uh, let's see here. This is Knock Point. <clears throat> okay, Knock Point. So, yeah, they, they go to Knock Point's house. And we we see that yo this house has a lot of dolls. I I mean, opposable, um, uh, collectibles and stuff. Yay! Not like those Funko Pops. Hmm. That's like when you say tell someone, hey, those are pretty cute uh, dolls. It's like they're action figures. <laughs> oh, boys, have, have have you seen? What did you see? <laughs> I didn't see anything. I, I forgot how the joke goes. Remember Captain something, whatever, from Spaceballs? Oh, I don't remember. And I've seen the movie, but I don't remember it off by heart. We're playing with the dolls. Oh, oh yeah. Where Dark Helmet is playing with the dolls and gets interrupted. <laughs> Knock before you come in here. <laughs> did you see anything? No, sir. I didn't see you playing with your dolls. <laughs> but anywho, continuing on. We see that the house has a lot of action figures. And it seems that she even commissioned Rarity to make dresses. And what does pass do mean? It means Rarity's going to send someone to break your th- hooves. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. But anywho, we are introduced to, properly introduced to, uh, Notch Point. And she seems to be injured. Oh no, that's not great. She explains the certain situation with how she lost her prize turtle and she's blaming it on Elder El uh, Elder Al Elder Brown? Elder Brown, yes. Because she wanted to buy the turtle from her, but yeah, no. So they they're fighting each other. But um that that's the whole setup, and she's very sad about it. Uh, Tank walks. Tank is joining them on this mission, by the way. Uh, he sees that hey, there's some lettuce, but no, it's not lettuce. It's arugula, and if Tank's eat it, he'll have a very bad tummy ache. Oh no! So I'm forgetting her name. What's her name? Not Notch Point here. Notch Point gives Spike some carrots, and yay, that's awesome. So with that, they head down for another person's location, and they meet up with the uh, Brown, Miss Mrs. Brown. What was her name again? Alder uh, Brown. Yeah, Alder Brown. Yes. So they meet up with Alder Brown, and she explains the situation about how this race must go on, and she really wants to put in a race and wins and whatnot because the victory previously was stolen from me. Blah 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 blah. And now Twilight just tries to find the evidence or whatnot because it's how how I am not getting any of this. How much Sherlock Holmes have you read? <laughs> None really, because most of the part here I'm just trying to find a coherent story or just trying to t- retell it in a short form without sounding like I'm insane. Well, we're in this phase where they're basically trying to gather stories all in the same event. Funny enough, though, n- we aren't treated to any of a fl- any flashback panels, so we don't see anyone doing anything, even if it's under speculation. We we kind of do with uh, Downey here. Is Downey? Yeah, Downey. I think that's the name of the barn, actually. Uh, sorry. Well, let's see the ha- the mostly deaf guy with the carrots on his uh, hindquarters. Mm-hmm. That's Miller spoke. You're right. There are only there are two panels that serve as a spe- uh, a flashback, as a uh, Lee Stride uh, con- considers it. But that's it. Everyone else is just talking about it, and thus it's actually kind of uninvolving. I'm reminded of Sherlock when he considers scenarios. He will uh, you'll see it play out in his mind. Usually, these very quick cuts 
to show that this is everything he's processing in an instant. And it makes it both exciting, but we're also involved. Twilight, we're watching her think about it, but we're watching her, not what's going on in her head. You know what? I'm I'm, I'm going to pause here. So, so, Silver, you gave your thoughts. So, Tara, what, what were you, man? Like, how do you feel about this one? I mean, I kind of agree with Silver because I don't know. Like, I haven't grown up with Sherlock's home, but I have seen a lot of mystery, uh, I guess, movies and a couple of mystery shows. And there would be times where they're thinking about something or they're thinking of a scenario that could possibly happen. Like, um, I forget the name of the one episode, but it's the one where Pinky's trying to figure out who ate the piece of cake. And when she's imagining these scenarios, we see the imagination that goes through her head. Mystery on the uh, Friendship Express. Yes. yes, that's Yay. the one. I remember that episode. <laughs> yeah, because we we see we see her uh, give her thoughts on how jo- um, Joe did it, or how um, Muriel. Uh, no, it's not Muriel. Uh, uh, shoot, I forget the name. Griffin <laughs> Pony. Yeah, um, but yeah, she gives out all these uh, theories, and we see her, in her imagination. But Twilight. Like so, we said we just see her think about it, but it's not like she's thinking. Oh, well, how could he've done it though? And then we see the imagination of it. Yeah, that should be the way, but in this case, it's they don't do it, and I think that's going to be one of their uh, downfall or one of their wait. That doesn't really make sense moment. But anywho, um, I'm, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to try to sound coherent. <laughs> so, um. As the day ends, Twilight just says to uh, Stride, saying that, okay, uh, it's been a long day for us, it's been a long ride. Uh, we'll try and pick this up tomorrow. And Stride just says, oh, if you need me, I'll be at the bar um, going to take a drink of cider and whatnot. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, um, never mind, I'll just go on. Uh, Twilight, Tank, and Spike heads to their room and relax. Twilight just apologizes to Tank, saying that, uh, sorry you had to join us for this boring moment, but no problem, we'll try and race, we'll try and race. And Spike here says, oh, there's something cool to lift up your spirit, is to put on your race helmet? Or racing shell, yes. And Spike just says, wow, you look completely like a different turtle in that thing. And with that, Revelation, Twilight just says, oh, I need to meet up with Stride and tell her something. And she says that the race must go on. And what was the line here again? Uh, bring everybody out, uh, start the bet, start and whatnot. And yay, she gets everybody hype. And she questions, how does Pinky do this on a regular basis? And yay, uh, the word bet was used in this scenario here so wow that's something is it though is it yeah i mean when you're talking about bets like this it's usually gambling Oof. we had a law change here in america recently gambling's been given some more free reign i can't log into youtube without getting a gambling app ad <laughs> yeah wow that's just interesting like a bad way interesting like what <laughs> Why? That's just bad. But anywho. Mm -hmm, But anywho. So, Twilight suits up and gets ready for the race. And Stride says, At least you managed to reignite the love for racing in the town, Princess. And Princess Twilight just says, I I just uh, reignite some of their friendship because we have a mystery to solve. Yay. And... This is one of the most meta panels ever because, you know, she could just reveal everything and let, uh, and save us pages. And the male pony just says, oh, that's the overly dramatic Ponyville attitude for you. Ha ha ha. Very meta. Very meta. So meta. So anywho, Twilight gets Spike ready for the race. And with that... We go, we we go for a race that lasted a few hours, because, oh, wow, that's just dumb. But they make it sound so exciting. 
because there's speed lines and drama and stuff. Wow, I can hear the Eurobeat going in the background. Don't you guys? I hear more dubstep. And with that, um, with the race going on and whatnot, they have a winner. And the winner is said, uh, Scarlet Study. Yay! Scarlet Study won the race. Woohoo! But it's not Scarlet Study. It's Silver Blaze. Oh no! Everybody got really excited and whatnot. And it seems that how would I put this? It, it, uh, Silver, do you want to break this down? Because I got no idea. <laughs> well, first off, I do want to point out that the, the same meta ponies who were commenting are now swept up in the drama. They're all bug-eyed. <laughs> it's like, what? what? Oh, no. <laughs> Let's see here. So basically, da- Twilight is connecting all the pieces we saw th- thus far. Downey was in debt. So she wanted to sabotage... Uh, Silver Blaze rigged the rigged the match, but Silver Blaze wasn't having her arugula poisoning. Then tried to uh, basically put Silver Blaze in the cart, but Silver Blaze again thwarted her and got out. Went to go ha- help himself to some carrots at a neighbor's place, uh, and rather than run her own tortoise in the race, she changed the she put a casing on Silver Blaze's back. So he looked like uh, Scarlet, and thus would win the race under her name. That's some, that's about sums it up. And the reason for it is, I, I think you already men- <laughs> I think you already mentioned is because Downey owes Rarity a lot of Doge. And you know what? If you talk to Rarity about it, I'm sure she will work out a plan or even give it for you for free. R- Rarity, or she'll break your kneecap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. The funny thing is that no party is held accountable in this. There's a, there's an apology. True. And the apology... <laughs> uh, this is one of those scenarios where I feel like we're the odd man's out for not understanding the quote-unquote joke. Because what's going on? How did Twilight know all this? I mean, we were... We are represented with the... Sorry, we are presented with the... Same information that Twilight is getting. How how does she know? <laughs> what does she know that we don't know? I'm trying to think. And even we got extra info with the carrots at the, in the barrel from the Downey estate. Like, what? what? What's going on? I think Twilight's just been playing too much Among Us. Yeah, it feels that way. They stride is sus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But anywho... With that, Downey apologized to Brown and saying that just because of the stupid turtle, we got in the way of our friendship and whatnot. And they became friends again. And yeah, Brown is willing to help Downey with with any of her problems, including financials. And with that, episode ends. And wow, this is a short one. And there's a dog. Oh, the, our, sorry, go ahead. Our last stream was two hours long, so I'm okay with this. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, but still, I feel like I, you know what? I didn't ask you guys what you think about this one because, yeah, this is kind of straightforward, yet a bit confusing at parts. But anywho, uh, with that episode, and so Silver, what do you think? I consider this kind of feeling. Twilight does get to show off her smarts as she connects the dots and plans and sees the events as they truly happen we do finally get a flashback a legitimate honest flashback as we witness what really happened but because it's mostly ponies just standing there and talking to one another you don't really get invested in it and the mystery is a bit harder to track or maybe even care about so i come away from this just sort of and and again there are tons of references to sir arthur Conan doyle's work but as I'm not the most avid reader of Sherlock Holmes, I miss out on a lot. Same, not my thing, I guess. Same here, same here. And yeah, I'm guessing this reference abound. And Silver, uh, when you posted this review, uh, did you hear anything from the comments? It's been a while. Let's see. Uh... I mean, anything that you can remember that stands out. 
No, nothing that actually stood out. Tara, what do you think? Going to the webpage now. Well, for me, like I said, it does have an interesting story with the tortoise race. And, you know, it has a little bit of mystery to it. But as I was reading through the comic, as soon as I saw Alder Brown saying, you know, the race must go around. Uh, that's high. The mace must. Oh, God. What is <laughs> wrong with me? I can't speak today. <laughs> the race must go on. And as she was saying that and saying, you know, my tortoise must win, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but it's her. Because everyone else is, you know, they're worried about the tortoise, wondering, oh, the, the prize tortoise is gone. And this one's always like, I want the race to go on. So, like, okay, yeah, she's sus. She's the imposter. <laughs> Send her out into space. <laughs> oh, wow. Dude, but another I... thing, too, I'm going to get a bit nitpicky about is that um, I forget the owner's name that... Uh, Owns uh, Silver Blaze. I think uh, they see it here. Where is it? Yeah, it's the it's when we see the first appearance of the action figures. Yeah, uh, Downey Brown, Downey Byrne. Uh, as because she says, you know, she went to go check on her toys and she's gotten the gates open. But as we see in the flashback, how you know she got a black eye and she got knocked out. Here I am thinking. How do you get a black eye from a tortoise that's slow? Like, is he ninja now and he could super kick you to the face to the point where you get a black eye and knock you out? I mean, you know, you think a tortoise that's very slow, it would give you an, a little love tap in the face, you know? Not to the point where it gives you a black eye and it would knock you out. I, I mean, uh, Silver Blaze used tackle and it's super effective. Or they used arugula and it's not very effective. Aha. Uh -huh. It hurt you in its confusion. <laughs> So true. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like I I'm not I don't necessarily hate the comic. It's just one of those that it's entertainment. It's like if you don't have anything to pass the time, it's like eh, give this one a look, but not something I go back to. Totally agree. And as for me, oh sorry, before that, Silver, anything? Mm, I think I've said all of my piece. No, no, no. Uh, with the comments from EQD. Just that people enjoyed seeing Twilight solve this and they like all the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle references. Really now? Oh. Any that they pointed out? Well, I wasn't sure if Downey was anything other than the Robert Robert uh, Jr. variety. <laughs> and they said, no, that probably is the reference. Oh. Which, to be honest, if you're trying to go for Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he didn't write Robert Downey Jr. into existence. <laughs> How did so. you know? Mostly because I don't think you could write that much alcoholism. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, boy. I sh honestly, I shouldn't really make fun of how alcoholism. He, he struggled with that, and he got better. Yeah, he, he, turned, he turned his life around. Took a risk by playing Iron Man, and look where he is now. Dr. Doolittle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? Oh, God. You, you I mean, he's go. working on that. He's probably like, can I go back to being the guy in the suit? Oh, boy. Probably. But anyway, um, as for me, this comic was okay. It was not bad, yet it was not great. It's just... Eh, it was just okay. I mean, this is one of those where I wish I got all the reference in this one because I felt like this was flat for me. It it, it didn't really grab me. This was just okay. And I, I'm guessing, like what Silver mentioned, we didn't get to see any of the setup. We are just told stuff and we don't see what's going on. We, we don't see what's properly going on with stuff. And... As much as I'm trying to figure out how did Twilight solve the problem and how did Twilight knew that uh, Silver Bliss was in a disguise and not, no, just no. Uh, but basically, comics harmless. It was just okay. Anyway, um, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, that's a good question. What what are we doing next week? I assume. Well, we've been dancing around Pony Life again, so I think it's time to continue Norman's existential crisis. Oh, uh, are, we, are we not going to go for the discussion? I wasn't sure if we were saying that to the end of the year. Ah, all right. A discussion could be for later. Yeah, you know what? Pony Life. Okay. I'll... Sorry. Okay. How... 
How about we do the pony life and then a discussion of entertainments? Sure, why not? That that could be fun. <laughs> All right. Torture me first. Torture me more first. God dang it. <laughs> hey, I, I watched Ladybug for you. <laughs> uh fair trade, fair trade. Uh, at least my at least my torture is short. <laughs> yeah, but it hurts so much because Fluttershy best bone turned to be a god. Uh, so sad. And so it continues. <sighs> but yes, uh, what what's pony life next week? Oh boy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know what? Surprise! It's going to be the continuation <laughs> of what we left off with. <laughs> so yay. Uh, Pony oh, Life yeah. next week. Uh, oh, it'll be great. But anywho, um, <clears throat> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. So the show Twitter account is at show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can a good people find you? Oh, lots of places. You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Or you can support my videos and comics uh, on Ko-fi and Patreon. Do a search for Silver Quill. Also, a search of Silver Quill or After the Fact will produce me on YouTube. I shall just appear. Huzzah! On Wednesdays, you can find me posting reviews and editorials on Equestria Daily. Ah, Equestria Daily is awesome. Oh, um, I'm checking out on the Twitters. And Silver, congratulations on 10K followers. Oh, thank you. Just notice this. It's kind of strange it's, that I notice it now. All right. <laughs> oh, it was, it was unexpected. I never, when I started out, I never thought I'd have that big a following. Oh, you know, the people love to watch you. They love to watch me blow up explosions. And more than that. Oh, and more than that, sir. A lot of stuff. But still, yes, awesomeness. Congratulations on the 10K followers. Very jelly. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Anywho, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people could find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they could just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. Go follow them, guys. It's really oh, great. so close. Oh, shit. Ah. <laughs> But anyway, uh, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also Stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Leg and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys, for the support. And with that, we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs> and with that, I am Roman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Oh, that, that was a slow race. I probably could have beaten that 10 seconds flat. Yeah, you, you cheat. It's not my fault that those other tortoises don't have powers like mine. Yeah. Torterra used butt hurts. It's super effective. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Someone call the Wambulance for Torterra. <laughs> uh, so, Torterra is salt. <laughs> oh, yes. Because the salt element of plants. They don't go well together usually. <laughs>